Hope you're doing good. Micah back with another video. Back here to talk about some battery tips for the iPad Pro. Now these battery tips can apply to most iPads that have these features. I have the one terabyte version of the iPad Pro M2 or 2022 12.9 inch. So without further ado, if you guys like these types of videos, tips and tricks, software updates, new features, camera review, not camera reviews, tech reviews, in general, right? Smartphones, tablets, and the like. The latest news, tech news. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. So that way you know it's my videos. That way we can sit back, chillax, see what's cracking. Now, let's get into the video. And the first thing I'm going to suggest with iPads is if you have this feature known as Stage Manager, now one of the easiest ways to find it is if you hit uh, Settings, go to Control Center, and then you come down here, you'll see Stage Manager right there. I suggest you turning that off. Unless you're working in a workflow type setting where you absolutely need it, and that icon will pop up right here that's highlighted for me, I'm using it. Unless you absolutely need to use Stage Manager or you just really love the aesthetic, I would say turn Stage Manager off. That is because it takes more power for the iPad to run Windows in that form factor than just general mobile tablet landscape style app form factor. So running Windows in the background like that just takes up more battery. So I would suggest you turn that off. Now if we jump back into settings here, dark mode is not going to really apply with the iPads as of right now because they're, they, well at least these current 2022 models and maybe the 2021 rock mini LED. And so what that means is the, the lights are still emitting even though they could be at zero there's like still very very subtle use there so dark mode still won't really mean anything but it does present a clean look for the ipad now next year or 2024 ipads will have oled panels dark mode will then apply there but in this case dark mode will not apply so if we want to go in order of settings what we're going to do is make sure we're going to come in here to if you have the lte version in your Wi-Fi or in your cellular connectivity settings, you'll see an option to do Wi-Fi assist. Turn that off. And what that does is it basically cuts mobile on or uses data if Wi-Fi is weak. Turn that off. Another thing is if you're not using Bluetooth, if you don't do a lot of air dropping to your tablet or back and forth from your tablet to another device, turn Bluetooth off. If you don't use a lot of headphones with this device, turn Bluetooth off. Only turn Bluetooth on if you absolutely need to use it or in that moment when you need to use it. And that's because again, that is potentially seeping some battery in the background because it is a essentially a radio that's still active on standby in the background. Next thing is notifications. Turning notification, well, actually having more control of a notification. As you see here, I have a scheduled summary on my iPad. I also have the same thing on my iPhone. What this does is limit the amount of notifications that consistently ping your device. So instead of them pinging all the time, what it will do is just gather them or, or really just display apps that may have notified in the back, in, the, in like the super background, the best way to put it. So your A, you won't get disturbed and B, you'll save some battery life because you won't get a bunch of dinging, vibrations, haptics, or, you know, alerts hitting your device. And so you can do a schedule summary. Now, most of us may not have a lot of activity going on on our iPad. So we may not even have to worry about notifications in that way. And if that is the case, then you can get a little more granular with it and come in here to notification style and go app by app and turn off the notifications that you don't need for certain apps. This also works wonders because even if you have scheduled summary turned on, these apps still won't give you notifications because you turned them off. So it also further limits the amount of pinging your device will take when it comes to notifications. Big battery saver there. We can also jump into general and jump over here to airdrop. Now you can actually turn receiving off for airdrop as well. And that will also save battery life because it's not in search or on standby mode waiting for something to be received. So by turning airdrop to receiving off and only turning it on when you need to, you also save battery life in that way. If we jump over here to display and brightness, change your auto lock settings. Mine's on 15 minutes because I like my screen being on, but you can actually turn this off or keep it on and just do never. You manually turn your display off. And that just depends on your use for your iPad. But for me, 
I like 15 minutes, but if I were you, I would do like two to five. If you do two to five minutes, your screen automatically dims and then turns off a whole lot sooner, thus saving battery life because as the displays get more nice and more elegant, it also means it's going to end up taking up more battery life. So that's a heavy suggestion for me there is to turn your auto lock down to two minutes or five minutes. All right. All right. What's the next thing we can do? Well, let's come in here to multitasking and gestures. So as I said, you can also reach the stage manager here. You can turn that off. Uh, as you can see, you can turn them off completely or just do split view and slide over. It's up to your discretion how you use your iPad. So I would say Keep that in mind before, you know, selecting those. You can keep your dock active. Split view and slide over is normal, but if you don't want to do none of that and you just want to use one app at a time, just turn it off completely and you'll save battery life in that way as well. Some of these gestures, you can also turn off if you don't use them because, again, these are active software functions that's happening in the background waiting for you to use and those are, again are things that you can turn off to then save yourself additional battery life another way to save battery life is siri and search come in here and you can actually turn off listen for siri you turn off this then you'll save battery life for me i don't need it on my tablet because i have it on my phone so if i need to use siri i just press and hold the power button and that's much better and also saves battery life so i again i would say do that if you want to save even more battery life limit series activity in the background and the next place of course to save additional battery life is in your battery settings and you don't have the same amount of activity for battery settings on the ipad as you can see it just shows you your battery activity low power mode is going to be your best bet let's say you just don't use your ipad like that or you really just use it for media consumption turn on low power mode the reason being is because especially if you're not rocking an ipad pro it's not gonna you're not you're not going to have to worry about its refresh rate so turning low power mode on will save you additional background activity saving you that much more power and then you can still use the tablet as such now with ipad pros or displays that have 120 hertz and higher which right now is just 120 hertz turning this on may limit it to 60 hertz if not it will still limit a bunch of activity in the background that you won't have to worry about so i definitely would say keep that in mind when turning on low power mode because you're going to save a lot of battery life so if we go to accessibility and we come down here to display and text size, I believe what we want to do is scroll down a little bit more. Make sure you turn auto brightness on. If you turn auto brightness on, you will get much better control over your display brightness, which will then also improve battery life. Some of us just leave it on consistent 50%, 35%, 40%, 100%. But if you do auto brightness, it's going to fluctuate based off of the amount of ambient light that you have, and you'll get more of an adjustment or an adjusted brightness that will be more comfortable for the eyes, and it is typically a little flatter than manual static brightness. So definitely turn auto brightness on you will see an improvement there. And you may even see a little bit more improvement with reduced white point, And that's because it's going to actually calm down the saturation. And for the most part, I guess you could say contrast in terms of how punchy colors are, which would then, you know, lessen the amount of power that's being emitted from the display. So it's another tip in saving battery life on your iPads and iPad Pros. So if we actually go back an accessory one page and then actually come in here to motion if you want to increase some more battery life turn on reduce motion this will this will calm a lot of things down in terms of your activity and more straight to the point transitions means less battery uh, less battery that has to be uh, uh battery life that has to be eaten into from all the different types of transitions and and whatnot that takes place on your tablet turning reduce motion on will save you more battery life and limiting your frame rate so if low power mode won't do it turning this option on will so if you're not if you don't care as much for pro motion and you're comfortable with 60 hertz turning that on limiting it to 60 hertz you're going to see a massive improvement a massive improvement in battery life because that frame rate that adjustment between what one or 10 and 120 hertz 
can consume battery life from time to time. The point is, the point of that type of technology, though, is it's really supposed to save battery life because when you're not using your display, it will calm down from 120 hertz to typically like, what, 60 or 48. And when you're using it, it'll ramp back up. But if you limit it to 60, you don't even have to worry about that no more. It will stay much lower. And we know Apple has done a great job in terms of how smooth and fluid their user interface is, where you almost don't notice the difference between 60 hertz and 120 hertz. So I would definitely suggest turning on limit frame rate if you want to save even more battery life on your iPads. And those are the tips and tricks. Actually, I have one more. So if we scroll down here to weather your location, so I think for me, I think I have it on while using the app or widgets. The reason why that's a good idea is because if you're using weather widgets, that's the only time location will be triggered. And we know location or GPS can definitely be a battery hogger. So if you just if you do it for while using the app, opening the weather app or the weather widgets that you have active, that's the only time your location will be used. You can also turn on precise location if you wanted to to save even more battery life because, again, your display and GPS is gonna be like your biggest battery hoggers. So limiting the functions of those is where you're gonna save the most battery life. And I could say you can either do never and just you know refresh when you have to, or ask next, next time or when I share while using the app. You do always, you definitely gonna see a little bit more battery life being used, but I will definitely say that limiting your location awareness will save yourself battery life on your iPads and iPads Pro and your iPad Pros. So those are my battery tips and tricks for the iPad. Let me know down in the comment section below what are some of the tips and tricks you use to save battery life. These are some that I use or recommend to those who are trying to save additional battery life. And as you saw, I even kind of changed a few of mine up because I kind of forgot to on my iPad. The comment section is open for discussion. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so that way you know it's my videos. That way we can sit back to see what's cracking. But your man Mike is signing out until the next video. Wait, boy.